Hey everyone, welcome to 5-Minute Devotionals. We are going to start a new series in 1 John. I uh, just had an opportunity to preach from this letter and I was just reminded again of the richness of this book and how much there is for us here, particularly for the culture that we live in. So just want to give you like a two-minute background on the book and we're going to look at one verse from the first chapter. So what I love about letters in the Bible is that they are one side of a two-way communication. Obviously, John is addressing actual needs of the early church. And so when we dig in here, we sort of learn what was it like then? What was going on then? And because this is the inspired word of God, I truly believe that there's a reason that these are the letters that have been maintained and preserved for us to read. I believe that the same struggles that they had then relate to the struggles that we have now. So here's an example of that. Much of what's talked about in 1 John that we're going to see is about how we integrate our spiritual life into our everyday life. That there is, a direct, there is a direct connection between the way we understand who God is, the way we believe who God is, the way we interact with God, and the way that we actually live our life. And what we know about this, this letter is we know what was going on in the culture around the time that it was written. And one of the things that was happening was this twisting of the truth of who, God, who Jesus is and what it means to follow him. And this twisting, for our purposes, what we need to know is that there was a sort of line of thinking, which was became a heresy, meaning it is not the truth, but there was a line of thinking called Gnosticism. And what we want to know about that for our purposes is that Gnosticism taught that you can have a spiritual life and that can be different than your material life. That basically what happens in your body has no impact on what's happening in your soul. And because of that, it kind of allowed for the freedom to just do whatever you want and be whoever you want with no regard for actually living an upright life. And so John is going to step into that and address the actual truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we live in a world that also wants to separate our lives into categories and believe that if I, if I act this way, it doesn't have to impact how I feel over here and that I have an inner moral compass and how I feel is fine with how I live. And we sort of can leave our Christianity out of that, if that makes sense. So this whole letter is an opportunity and an invitation to an integrated life, to actually take what we learn here and have it impact the way that we live. Um, so the first chapter, we're just going to look at one verse in here, and it's 1 John 1, 9. And this has long been a favorite verse of mine because it kind of gives you a process for understanding how faith works. And it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So there's two parties in this verse. There's what we do and there's what Jesus does. And what we do is we confess our sin. Confessing our sin means being really honest with ourselves about the ways and the actions and the thinking and the feelings that are lived separately from a relationship with Jesus Christ. All the ways that I take matters into my own hands, um, my judgments about people, my judgments about the world, my anxieties about the future, everything that I do in my life that I do outside of abiding in Christ. And honestly, if you sit for a few minutes, I, um, I'm very aware of this in myself. If I actually listen to myself for a few minutes, it's pretty easy to access what that sin really is. Uh, it doesn't have to manifest itself in like this massive moral failure. Uh, the reality is that I spend a lot of time living over here in my own kind of kingdom, in my own thinking. And if I slow down, uh, my job is to confess that as sin. To actually say, God, there are these places in my life that I really try to live outside of your control and outside of communication with you and really outside of your love or your truth. And here's what they are. And, and this is what I've been thinking about. And this is where I'm, I want to confess to you. Confession can be in the form of prayer. It could be in journaling. It might be in taking a walk and, and talking out loud to God. Hopefully you have a place in your neighborhood. You can do that where you won't seem too crazy. But I think really finding the specific things that you want to say. And then look at the promise of this verse. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. You see, Jesus depends on his own character for the way that he treats us. So it doesn't say if you confess your sins and you're faithful and just in the way you live, then Jesus will forgive you. No, it actually says if you confess your sins because Jesus is faithful and just, he will forgive you. He will purify you and he will cleanse you from unrighteousness. 
You see, Jesus depends on his own character for the moves that he makes in our life. He doesn't depend on our character. The only thing we do is bring our willingness to be honest and we ask God to help us be honest. And we say, you know what? God, this is the way that I live outside of your character. This is the way I live outside of your control. And you are, if you're really honest with yourself, there might be places where you say, and God, this is the way I live outside of your control. And I don't even want to give you control of these things. Would you help me give you control of these things? That's honest. Just confessing and acting like you want God to be in charge of your whole life when you really don't isn't really confessing. To me, confessing is saying, God, I have control of these things and I like having control of them. Would you help me want you to have control of them? That's, that's a move toward honesty. And because Jesus depends on his own character, he depends on his faithfulness, he depends on his sense of justice for the way that he forgives us, we know that this will 100% always be true. Because Jesus is the only leader who is perfect. And he is the only savior who can actually save us from what he promises to do here. So this is a powerful truth that integrates our lives. The more honest I am about who I really am, the more I'm going to experience the cleansing from unrighteousness, the purifying of myself that comes because Jesus uses his own character to make that promise. So I hope that's a great start and I'll see you next time for 1 John chapter 2. Mm -hmm.